oldest son of NBA superstar LeBron James, 18-year-old Bronny James, is recovering at a California hospital after suffering cardiac arrest during a basketball workout. I'm Stephanie Haney, and in this edition of In the News Now, we'll tell you what we know about what happened to Bronny and share important tips that parents need to know when it comes to their kids and sports. The good news now is Bronny James is no longer in the ICU and is stable. A family spokesperson says he suffered cardiac arrest on Monday at basketball practice at the University of Southern California, where he's expected to attend and play as an incoming freshman. In a statement, the family spokesperson says LeBron and Savannah wish to publicly send their deepest thanks and appreciation to the USC medical and athletic staff for their incredible work and dedication to the safety of their athletes. The news sent shockwaves through the basketball community and has many parents wondering if this could happen to their kids. KHOU's Gerald Harris spoke with a doctor about what happened to Bronny and concerns for young athletes about heart issues. LeBron James's son, Bronny James, is recovering tonight after suffering sudden cardiac arrest. Our young athlete and young individuals are not immune uh, from a rather catastrophic and could be catastrophic event. Dr. William Zogby, chief of cardiology at Houston Methodist Hospital, says instances of cardiac arrest in young athletes has not changed significantly. I think we pay more attention to it, particularly when you have young athletes who are rather famous or connected to people who we love dearly. But for athletes like those hooping at the Fondy Rec Center, the chance, while rare, is not zero. Somebody goes down with sudden cardiac arrest, you have six minutes to revive their heart, get their heart going again or they're gone. Scott Stevenson's son, Cody Stevens, is the namesake of a 2019 law, which now gives parents the option of having their children's heart tested during their sports physical. It's a test Scott says could have saved Cody's life. Uh, these celebrity uh, cases raise awareness so wonderfully. But, you know, every day we're losing kids on skateboards or kids dying at home that are athletes, and, and we don't hear about them, and we're not doing much about it. He says more testing should be done on young athletes, while doctors say it's important to check your family's history and stay connected with a health care provider. Any uh, uh, flag that should be raised for further testing an individual before they go into very competitive sports. What happened to Bronny James can happen to any athlete on any field or court. It's shining a spotlight on the importance of being prepared. WMAZ's Frank Malloy spoke with high school coaches and doctors about precautions they take on and off the field. I was kind of assuming since his dad has that treatment from the Lakers and stuff like that, and then him at a D1 college program, he has that treatment, but I guess we're not all so lucky. Corey West is an offensive lineman for Rutland High School's football team. He says hearing about Bronny James made him want to pay attention to his body more. Now, his coach says it can happen to anyone at any time, and it did to one of his past players. When I first heard about it, it kind of took me back to my uh, first year at the Southeast Book High School. I actually had a kid that uh, passed away there due to cardiac arrest. Similar incidents have happened here in Bibb County. In 2021, a Southwest High School football player died after collapsing at practice. 15-year-old Joshua Ivory Jr. had an abnormal heart rhythm, which led to sudden cardiac arrest. In April of this year, a 21-year-old Mercer University soccer athlete died during a pickup game. Abdul Rashid Babatunde Agbaje also went into cardiac arrest. Williams says the death of a player made him more alert to the conditions of his players. Being a head coach, you, you, you're in charge of all these guys who are may not be your, your child biologically, but you view them as your child, so, and you know those parents send them to you. Dr. Christy Peterson, a pediatrician with Atrium Navison Health, says an athlete's family history plays a big role in their health. Some of the most important things on that sports physical are the history questions from their family. Peterson says the goal is to catch any underlying conditions before an athlete steps out onto the field. And how about a message to athletes from athletic trainer DeAndrea Malone? So I don't want anybody to go into playing a game or, or into practice scared that it will happen, um, but just know and have trust in like the staff that they're prepared to handle a situation if that, if that does occur. So how often does cardiac arrest happen, and when it does, how can you help? WFAA's Kara Sewell explains what parents need to know about kids and their chances of going into cardiac arrest. Sudden cardiac arrest is the number one cause of death at school. 
and a student athlete dies from it every three days. That's according to the American Academy of Pediatrics. Thousands of kids in North Texas are taking physicals right now for fall sports, cheer, and marching band. The UIL, the governing body for Texas high school sports, requires all coaches to be CPR certified, and each school must have an AED. The UIL publishes a sudden cardiac arrest awareness form, and when you fill out the medical history form, there is an option to obtain additional cardiac screening. You can check a box to obtain an ECG, which records the electrical signal from your child's heart to check for different conditions. Schools can help with scheduling the electrocardiogram, but they are not required to do so. When something like this happens, it's crucial that you know how to perform CPR. For what steps you need to take to see if someone is going into cardiac arrest, we turn to KPNX's William Pitts. A cardiac arrest is where your heart is suddenly stopped or it is quivering. It's not beating normally. That can happen anywhere at any time. So what do you do if someone has collapsed and is not breathing? Jamie Phillips, the director of American Emergency Response Training, says call 911 and immediately start CPR. Hey, buddy, wake up. Are you OK? And they're not breathing normally. We're going to get on that chest and give them the CPR. The sooner, the better to increase chances of survival. Phillips says timing is everything. Every minute that they go without lowers their chance of survival by 10 percent. CPR will buy time for the patient until paramedics arrive, but an AED or automated external defibrillator is the preferred tool. And Phillips says all organizations should have one available. Stay calm. The AED actually gives you voice instructions for each step. Attach to patient's bare chest. The device will give the patient the necessary shocks to the heart that are needed until paramedics arrive. Phillips says CPR training is simple and could save a life. Assess, alert, and attend. Get them that CPR. William Pitts, 12 News. As you heard earlier, sudden cardiac arrest is one of the leading causes of death in athletes, which means, sadly, there are other student athletes who have suffered cardiac arrests, like one high school student in Columbus, Ohio. Luckily, thanks to his coach's quick actions, he's out of the hospital and recovering. Ashley Bornanson with WBNS spoke with the teen, his mom, and his coach about what happened. Walking the high school track, a simple task for many athletes. But for incoming Kilborn freshman Kanan Dickman, it's a sign of hope. Kanan, how does it feel like to just be able to walk right now? Really good. It feels really good to be out. Uh, be this is where you belong. Yeah. These are some of his first steps after seven days in the hospital after he collapsed during soccer athletic conditioning. And we were on our second mile, and um, I just basically collapsed. The healthy 15-year-old athlete says he blacked out when he fell to the ground and went into cardiac arrest. I actually don't remember anything that day. His mother, Pam, says this was the scariest moment of her life. And then I finally get close enough to see him, and I just grabbed his hand and said, Mom's here, Kanan. Um, and I'll never forget his eyes because he just wasn't there. Athletic director Jeff Todd says he's proud of the coaches and players who immediately went calmly into action. You know, we had uh, Coach Brunner and Coach Patrick uh, stayed calm, handled the situation appropriately. Four minutes was all they had to save his life. Some of our seniors stepped up and helped go get the AED. They brought it back out, helped move kids away from the scene, um, really showed some great leadership and, and, and some poise and calmness. Kanan says he owes everything to his coaches. I just want to say thank you, and I, I don't really, I can't really put it into words how grateful I am. The school has already ordered an additional AED that will be placed outside closer to the field and readily available. We don't know if he'll ever be able to play the sports that he loves again, but but we're trying to concentrate on the fact that we almost lost him, and that's the most important part, that he's still with us here today. Dickman says she hopes Kanan's story serves as a reminder for all schools to be prepared. If we could help get the word out um, to place AEDs at more tracks and fields and outdoors, that would be our, our biggest message. And Kanan and his family tell me they're taking it day by day, but he's incredibly thankful for his coaches and the Worthington community for their continued support. Reporting in Worthington, I'm Ashley Bornanson for 10 TV News. There are classes available near you if you're interested in learning how to administer CPR. You can find those at AmericanRedCross.org. It's important to remember to be prepared as these medical emergencies can happen anywhere at any time. Thanks for watching this edition of In the News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney.